All right, good morning again. Double check, make sure the sound's still working for everybody. Good, excellent. Okay, how many of you um, are uh, traders with us? You've used our system, you use our indicators in some fashion. How many of you have been doing this for a, a, at least a little while? Stig, you've probably been around about longer than anybody. How many of you are are fairly new to what we're to what we're doing? Just here to see what uh, what this stuff is all about. Well, we're excited to show you, um, and as you can see, there are a lot of our traders here that have been, uh, they're either new with us or they've been with us for a long time. <clears throat> like uh, I mentioned Stig, <laughs> Stig comes and goes. <laughs> um, we've had uh, tra uh, traders that have been trading with us for years and we're always excited to have new people learn about what we're doing. It's kind of different. It uh, It's absolutely uh, not the kind of thing that you've learned about in the past, we take a lot of the new market dynamics that are happening today in the markets and uh, we analyze those new dynamics to see the uh, what the uh, opportunities are that, uh-oh, uh, everybody can still hear me now, right? All right. Yeah, I guess Norm's having some problems with sound. If, uh, by the way, if I lose sound, uh, please let me know as soon as you can. Um, I, I don't expect it, but it does happen from time to time, you know, when you're dealing with Wi-Fi and Internet and all that, all this stuff. is a It's, it's kind of a delicate balance. Uh-oh, Sally doesn't have sound either. All right, so if somebody, next time somebody complains about sound, if uh, you could help me out and type it in and let them know to restart their browser. Normally, Connor is here to help me with that, but uh, he's off today. So it's just me and you guys. All right, so <clears throat> first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about our trade setups. That uh, first one we're going to talk about is one of our oldest trade setups. And the reason we're going to do that is because this new trade setup is a tuning, essentially, of the older trade setup. We've got some new indicators, and uh, the new indicators help us take what we're now calling the naked speed tick trade setup, okay? Okay. Well, man, we're having all kinds of problems with people. Yeah, Mark, we're projecting. Everybody can see, right? There is a yeah, – everybody can see this this graphic on the screen. Sound is choppy. Is it choppy for everybody? I can turn the mic up a little bit. No, nope, not choppy. Everybody can see. <laughs> of course. It has to be, uh, I moved the mic a little bit closer to my mouth. Maybe that helps. Yeah, try, uh, try uh, I use Firefox or Chrome. Okay, well, I'm always, I'm always leery. I want to make sure that we're doing the best we can, so other people are, are tending to have a little bit of problem today. So hopefully y'all can work that out by switching browsers or, or whatever.
All right. So we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys kind of help with the other people that are having problems, and uh, uh, we're gonna move forward so I don't get bogged down with this stuff. So we have an indicator that we created a long time ago called the speed tick. Now, when I say that we're taking advantages of the new market dynamics that we're experiencing in the last many years now, but um, a lot of what's happening now is being precipitated by these supercomputers, you know, the, the, the big money, the guys that, that have the ability to move the markets, to manipulate the markets. Uh, and they can do this now, what used to be over minutes or, uh, or hours or even days, now happens in milliseconds. The problem with a, what a lot of you guys have been learning over the last, you know, however long you've been trying to trade, is there's a regurgitation of information that's 100 years old. And people keep trying to use this 100-year-old technology to trade today's markets. And unfortunately for most people, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work anymore because of the influences in today's markets can change everything that you're working on, all the, the trade setups that you're, that you're sitting and waiting for them to work out over a long period of time. These new market dynamics, these new uh, market makers have the ability to completely change everything in a heartbeat. And you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've sat there watching the charts, right? and you're watching your trade and suddenly something that seems extremely random happens and the market just goes crazy at least for a short period of time your trade gets uh, whipped out or suddenly goes way against you or whatever we've all experienced it right and now you've got to recover from that if your if your trade's going to work out for you, and 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 now you've got emotions to work with. Okay, just hang in there because the rules say I need to just hang in there, and things will be fine. Okay, I found that didn't work for me, so I started thinking about how can I work on this smaller time frame. How can I work within these guys, with these guys that are trading in milliseconds? What can I learn about the markets after they do their manipulation? So that's where this whole thing started. Okay, that's where this whole intentional trader, our pullback trade setups, all of it started. That the research started and the and the result of the research was what we call our speed tick. So let me show you the speed tick. All right, <clears throat> now, the speed tick is actually a tiny little indicator that we put on the chart. And these are that one's actually probably smaller than what is typically on our charts. Um, I, I should have made these a little bit bigger. Um, but you see that little arrow right there? That's a speed tick. That changed everything for us. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, uh, we're projecting, so you need to uh, uh, switch to a different browser. This changed everything. See that? See that? Now, what I want you to understand is that these little indicators here, these little speed ticks, are actually being generated by this histogram here. This histogram is nothing more than what you could compare to a speedometer in your car, okay? This histogram is telling us the rate at which orders are being processed through the exchange. And when that rate reaches a certain speed, that's why we call it speed tick, when it exceeds a certain speed, we know that it's highly unlikely 
that retail traders are doing that because there aren't enough retail traders in the in the markets to move the markets that way. Now you'll notice these lines are not just straight across. They're conforming to the uh, the rate at which the trades have been have been uh, being placed over time. Okay, and that's how we know how many retail trailer traders are likely in the market at this particular time and what the likelihood is that this increase in speed is not retail traders, okay? So my mission was to find out when the market makers were manipulating the markets. Interesting thing about this, so I had a theory, right? I had a theory that if I could figure out when the big guys, the money makers, or the 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 uh, uh, the market makers, uh, yeah, sorry, Mark. Yeah, we'll send it out. The uh, if I could figure out when the market makers were doing their thing, and then look and see what happens right after they manipulate the market. So I did that. I thought, okay, I've got a theory. So if I can figure out the speed at which the orders are coming in is dramatically faster than what's been going on over the, you know, the previous X amount of time, and we had this sudden increase in speed, not likely retail traders could do it. What happens right after that? So here's a here's a good example of what happens. This bar was a sudden burst of speed. Relative notice there's no speed ticks here. Relative to the speed of the orders coming in here, this bar was dramatically faster. Okay, the orders came in dramatically faster. And then what happened after that? Price went straight up on the open of the next bar. Now I started looking at this. This is the open, so this doesn't count. This is the open of the equities here. This is 930, so that, that doesn't count. So I started looking. I, I had this theory and I sent this off to my programmer and I said, create me a histogram and and I want to see the speed at which orders are coming in. So he did and I threw this histogram on. First it was just a histogram. Then we created the actual indicator. But I started looking at the histogram. I said, okay, so we exceeded here, here. Look what price did. Okay, let's see. We exceeded it here. There's speed. Look what price did. It it stopped and changed. Look, price. And this is random chart. This is just something. This is yesterday. So I just grabbed this, this chart here. Speed tick here. Look what happened. I was elated. When I found out that I that suddenly I picked up where price is likely to stop and turn, all I needed was an edge. Okay, that's it. If I could just find an edge, if I knew based on what was going on in this bar, what was likely to happen on the next bar, and highly likely, then I've got something. And that was the beginning of the change for everything for me. Okay, as it relates to the mechanics of our trading. So, uh, very quickly, before I start talking about what we're doing, uh, the, you know, the uh, the technical details of the trade setups, I want you to remember what we talked about on Thursday. And for those of you that weren't here, on Thursday we talked about these areas of accumulation and distribution with the the market makers are manipulating the markets on a regular basis as long as the instrument has liquidity, meaning there are people to take advantage of, there are traders to take advantage of. As long as there's liquidity, these guys have the ability and the opportunity to take advantage of us. So very quickly, 
and I do this all the time so that you guys that are new and you don't know, uh, you know, exactly what we're doing or why, uh, we'll give you a general idea of what's going on here. So the market makers have this cycle. And uh, this is based off of Wickoff studies. Um, and the market makers have this cycle where they go through this, this manipulation phase, okay? So the first phase is accumulation where they're going to acquire as many of the available assets as they can. And they're going to do it quietly and stealthily so that people don't know what's going on. To you and me, price is just channeling. There's nothing to do. We just sit and wait. Then there's this markup period, and then they do it again. And then there's this markup period. And, I, and, and there's a lot more that goes into these bars, and we'll talk about this another time. You can refer back to the, uh, uh, the video on Thursday on how they push this price up and why this price goes up. But then we go into another pullback and accumulation and then a push up and then another pullback. And this could be accumulation, but ultimately it's going to be distribution here. And it looks a lot like accumulation. This is where the market makers make all their money, okay? They bought it all down here. They sell most of it or a large portion of it up here. This is where they make their profits. Now, they don't just stop and walk away. What they want to do is set it all up to happen all over again. So they start running price up because they control price, right? So through various means of control, through various means of other market makers coming in and controlling this, price runs up and then they'll run out of, they'll hit some exhaustion, they'll run out of sellers and uh, buyers and dump everything on the market all at once and drop price, all right? So this is what we're talking about today. This, this area where we can figure out where they're running up price or down, either way, doesn't matter, so that we can anticipate this. And this is our edge, okay? Everybody understand what we're doing here? Yeah, <laughs> I know. We've all done it. We all do it. Why? Fear of missing out. And they know exactly why they're doing that. Because they know. You, you've heard of momentum buyers. Yep. You've heard of momentum buyers. I talked about that on Thursday. Where they're going to buy high, sell higher. Well, these guys know. <clears throat> that as soon as they start pushing price up, idiots like us are going to jump in, feeling like they're we're going to get left out. Oh, it's a breakout. I want to catch the breakout, right? Because we got a channel here. I want to catch this breakout. And then price just runs up and hits exhaustion. All the buyers are done. All right. So this is our edge. All right, so we're going to talk about the speed uh, tick setup briefly. Most of you here already know the speed tick setup. But I want the rest of you to see this so that you understand the naked speed tick setup. Okay. So the first thing that we're looking for, this is, by the way, this is just a little, uh, a little uh, kind of a, a work board that I use for different scenarios for when you guys have questions and you say, well, what about this? And I can set up a scenario and I can show you uh, what about that. So what we're looking for here is a, the very first thing that we're looking for is a strong potential for exhaustion. When you see price doing this, does that feel like a strong potential for exhaustion? Probably not. If price is just channeling, chances are we're in an area of accumulation or distribution, and there's not going to be a lot of opportunity for us 
to place trades. So we're just going to sit and wait until we see something like this. So we get a breakout from this channel, right? I, I showed you that on that on that previous uh, graphic. We get a breakout from the channel, and price starts running up. All right, now we don't know if this is climactic volume or not. We're going to talk about the climax bar. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. What we know is that something is going on and that momentum has increased the thing about momentum these that's this is our momentum indicator these bars these bars that will turn the the uh the the color will change inside the bar relative to the momentum of the bar okay so what we know is that something is happening here but and this gets our our you know, our radar up. We start paying attention at this point because we've broken out of this channel and we know that something's happening that could potentially lead to exhaustion. So then we run up here and suddenly the outline of this bar turns pink. Pink tells us that we're in an overbought condition, okay? For us, we use the RSI indicator. Instead of using that oscillator down at the bottom of our screen that tells us when we're in, uh, when we're overbought or oversold and when we're not, and when we are and when we're not, when we are, we just, we just put it right here. So you know, there's no question. We're in an overbought condition. Another sign that price is getting exhausted. And here's the kicker. The speed tick comes in. Now, now we know, okay, not only has price moved a lot, not only have retail traders started pushing this price, but momentum traders have started pushing the price and the market makers are now manipulating the market. And when they manipulate the markets, they do it for one reason. They want to create a reaction. And the reaction is almost always the same thing every single time. Why? Because we're humans and we're stupid and we, we, we panic and we're very emotional, and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to react the same way every single time, even though you're trying to convince yourself not to do that, you do it anyway. I know this because I do it anyway. All right? So right here is the bar that has all of our information on it to tell us there's a high probability Price is about to change directions. Now, for many years now, almost 10 years, I've only taken these trades when I have support or resistance behind the trade. All right, so the next bar open right there. Can you see that? All right, so there's a, that's the open of the bar if you can't see that. All right. So this bar opens five ticks or less from this major line of resistance. These are our support and resistance lines that we have on our charts in the trade room. At this point... I'm putting a sell order on. Now, the thinking is that if price backs up, see, we already we already proved that this resistance has value. Okay, 
The reason I don't trade on this bar is because I want to watch this bar. I want to watch price. I want to watch how price reacts to this resistance. And I'm going to make my decision on the open of the next bar. At this point, I'm ready. All right, now, you think, oh, holy crap, that's awfully fast. I've been ready down since down in here, right, because price is channeling, and then we broke out of the channel and was showing strong momentum. During the course of this bar, this bar changed from just a basic, your basic white outline to pink during the course of this bar. So I'm already paying attention here. So on the course of this bar, I get the pink outline. I'm overbought. I get the speed tick. I've hit resistance. I'm watching and I'm waiting for the open of the next bar. If I'm five ticks or less from this resistance, I'm going to short this right here. If I'm right there, what am I going to do, Christopher? No trade. Why? You say, but there's, resist there's resistance. No, I'm on it. There's nothing behind the trade to tell me or to help me in the event that the, that the trade wants to go against me. Down here, I have this line to help me. And believe me, this has helped me so many times. Sometimes it's still going to break through. It just does. There's no perfect answer for this. Okay? But to have a safety net, I've always called this a safety net, this is where I'm going to put on my trade. Not here. Not if the bar opens up here or if this one, you know, closes up higher. Whoops. How did I do that? If this bar opens, you know, up above the line and then this, uh, or this closes and this one opens above the line, there's no trade here. All right, so I need resistance behind my trade for a speed tick trade setup. Uh... I have no idea, Bob. We don't get a lot of complaints. Uh, we do get a few, and I'm not sure if it's the technology or what. Yeah, that's where it comes in. That's where it's questionable when 95% of the people are fine. And and so it could be your – I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. Well, we do have a video, so I apologize if you guys are having a hard time. Yeah, it's working great here, too. All right, so any questions? Uh, this, is, this is speed tick in a nutshell. All right, so any questions? Heinz, you must have me on twice because there's no echo. You must have two uh, browser windows open. Any questions? This is a very basic speed tick setup. Now, when I showed you this, uh, where'd that go? When I showed you this, you notice there's three lines here on this histogram. On this is what we call the speed tick level. All right. When price exceeds the first line, all right, we get a a white speed tick. This is generally going to tell us that this is a price manipulation and probably only one manipulator going at it at one time. Okay. 
And this is typically the most manageable trade that we have as, as it relates to a speed tick. Um, if that speed increases beyond this line and, and goes to the second line, we've now got a medium blue speed tick. And why do we want that? Not anymore, Bruce. Not anymore. That's why these are wavy lines now. They're adaptive. Ninja Trader 7 version, we didn't have the ability to do this. In Ninja Trader 8, we have the ability to make these adaptive so we no longer have to adjust them for each. Um, for each instrument that we trade. Okay, these will automatically adapt. So when we exceed the second line, we get a medium blue speed tick. Well, we have a, a cyan. All right, that's telling us that price is going really fast um, and that we may want to be a little bit careful because we might still have more push left okay then we have let's see if I've got one on here then we have where we exceed the third threshold line all right now we're moving so fast we're out of control I don't trade big blue speed tick trades here okay I have never traded these big blues. We print the big blues on the chart. This, the, the regular speed ticks will change colors as they move through the line. So when price, when, when the speed of the orders get past this line, we'll get a white speed tick. As the speed increases, it changes to the medium blue speed tick. And as it goes beyond this third threshold, it then changes to a big blue speed tick. Now, sometimes it happens so fast that it just goes straight to printing a big blue speed tick. When we see big blue speed ticks, we stop trading. We, there's no trade setup potential here, okay? So that's how you read the different speed ticks and what you're going to do. Um, yes, we use only one-minute charts in our trade room. Again, remember what I said, Tyra. We've adapted to the new market dynamics. Yes, speed tick is exposed to bloodhound. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we're finishing that up. Uh, speed tick's been working for some time in the Ninja Trader 8 version of bloodhound. But yeah, this all works in bloodhound. We've got a couple more that we've got a, that Jeremy's working on doing something with bloodhound to um, see our uh, rock star and uh, our other divergence indicators there there's something in bloodhound that they he has to fix for that to to work uh gosh if we're projecting to other people i would think that it's just projecting up to the internet so it has nothing to do with on my end joe try a different uh Either try a different browser or let's go with uh, watching the video. When we're done, we'll send it out to you. Are there any other questions about this speed tick setup? This is it in a nutshell. We've got to have this support and resistance. We've got to have strong momentum. We've got to be overbought. And we've got to have this uh, line five ticks or less behind the open of this this bar. And this is where the trade goes on. Now, say it open down here. And let's see if I've got one. Let's say it opens down here right here and immediately back up backs up here so if i didn't get my fill my trade on here 
That means I'm selling here, right? And price backs up. You're darn right I'm going to take it up here. This is a better fill. Okay? So I will take it up higher. Not up here. Okay? So if this bar actually went up here, I'm not going to take it here. I will only take it under this resistance. If this is already broken through, if this bar opens and jumps, I'm not taking that trade. Not up here. Yeah, these lines are our, are our support and resistance lines that we use in the trade room as part of our package. But down here, yes, I will take a better fill. Yes, on this bar, I'm waiting for the close of the bar to make a decision on selling on the open of this bar, okay? And I don't get in a rush, right? I'm not like, oh God, I gotta hurry. I just go about and I, I go, okay, there's a trade. Now, sometimes it just opens and drops, but not usually. It opens and hangs around long enough to get a trade on. And more times than not, it's going to back up at least a couple of ticks and test that line again. Yes, that's what these numbers are. Dwayne, and you can look at these numbers and make that decision based on the relative strength of this line. The higher this number, the stronger this line is likely to be. Okay? So that if if this line has not been, I got a number down here that's a real high one. So say this the the number at the end of this line is 205. That means it's been 205 minutes since the last time this line was touched. That means that this line is going to be or, or is likely to be very very strong, and that price is. If price approaches it like really fast, really steep, chances are that line is going to, or price is going to react to that line at least initially. All right. Make sense? So this number here is the one that you'll be looking for. I place, all right, so Bruce, here's what I teach, okay? I teach people putting limit orders on, okay? Because the worst, the only thing that can happen if you place a limit order here is that you won't get filled, right? And price drops and you just miss the trade. Over time, as you practice these trades and you get good at them, you can place a series of limit and market orders. I don't use stop limit orders on uh, speed tick trades. You could, you could, but I would only do that in the event that the, uh, price decided to jump like this, but you still thought, you know, there's a chance, you could put a stop limit order down here so that if price did back up and drop from up here, it would pick you up on the way down. I would, I would recommend practicing that a lot and see if that works out well for you. All right, I do place stop limit orders on a trade I call the FT or the first touch trade, which is a is the very first pullback trade I ever traded, all right? So if I have a huge number on this line, price approaches, it gets overbought and hits this line, I won't even wait for the open of the next bar. I'll put in a stop limit order down here because I'm looking to see if it hits that line and bounces right off of it. Now, that's called an FT trade. 
that was the very first pullback trade I trade I I started trading, and the pullbacks were 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 make you know they were working. They were working pretty good. That's when I started the research that came up with the speed tick. That's where the whole thing started. When I started having the speed tick to go along with this, everything changed. Yes, the white lines are numbers since the minute uh, are, are, since it was touched last. That is correct. It is not adaptive in NT7. Now, you can, if you so choose, change the parameters so that if you want to use the, the old NT7 um, histogram where you set the threshold levels manually, you can still do that in the NT8 version. I don't know anybody that does, but I knew that when people were switching over from using NT7 to NT8, there were there's always people that like it the way it is. So we we have the old version of this histogram inside the the speed tick that you can use if you so choose. Most I don't know anybody that does though. All right. Speed tick questions. This changed everything. This changed everything for me. As soon as we came up with the speed tick and we started putting this out, people started really nailing these pullback trades. Now, the reason I put on a limit order and I teach putting on a limit order instead of a market order is why, okay? We trade in the trade room, I trade, and I guess a lot of people like what I do and, and have been successful um, emulating my rules, I trade for a five tick hard target. That's it, five ticks. That came from a long study of watching this. How, because I know the price is going up and it's going to pull back, and then it's going to go up again, and then it's going to pull back, and then it's going to go up again, and it's going to pull back until the final markdown, okay? So we have this pullback, but then we have the trends, right? So here's the trend. So I know that price is going to pull back to some degree, and then it's going to go again, and then it's going to pull back, and then it's going to go again, all right? So I know this. So I studied it. What's the... <sighs> highest probability pullback number amount that I'm likely to hit most every time. All right? So most every time we're going to get five ticks. Sometimes we get three or four. Sometimes we get 50. You don't know. But five ticks is a good hard target. All right? We also have a seven tick stop, which we manage our stops relative to what's going on. So, for example, I enter on, let's just put a, uh, I enter on the open of this bar, right? But this bar shoots up like this, and it hasn't stopped me out yet. And then it, uh, the next bar opens, you know, right here. So I'm in this trade. I'm looking for a five tick target with a seven tick stop. This bar open here. My first move is to go to my Superdome. I use Superdomes to trade. And start pulling my stop up just behind where price is. Because I no longer have this resistance behind, okay? I no longer have that safety net to help me if the price starts going against me. The condition that got me into the trade was this safety net. That condition changed. No safety net, 
So since the conditions changed, I wouldn't have gotten into this trade under these conditions. I'm going to manage my stop and start pulling it up. I don't just jump out, right? I manage my stop and I pull it up right behind this because price could always still drop here, right? So I don't just jump out. I wait. And if it if price starts dropping, I start pulling my stop up behind it. Yeah, down, sorry. Pull my, my, my uh, stop down but right behind the trade. All right. Now, oh, I'll go back to uh, placing limit orders. If you miss the trade, okay, you missed it. If you put a market order on and price starts dropping as you're placing the market order, you could take some slippage and get filled down here. Now, remember, we've only got a five tick target. Well, what happened is, you know, we're, we're only expecting price to pull back a little bit and then take off again. But you've got filled down here, right? So you've taken some pretty good slippage on that trade. And now you don't have that five ticks anymore. I mean, you might get lucky and it might keep going. But we're trading pullbacks from a trend. We're not trading reversals. Keep that in mind. We do not trade for reversals. We're only pullbacks. We're expecting this trend to continue. Okay, any questions on trading the speed tick trade? No questions. All right, we're going to go to the next one. This is the one a lot of you came for. So we've done the study, right? We've done the study of the, uh, hold on a second. on these uh, climactic bars, right, that I showed you, these climax bars here. We've been studying, trying to figure out when it's a climax bar so that we can anticipate this, okay? We're always looking for more and more ways to understand when price is likely to pull back. We don't change what we do because it works. We've been doing it for over 10 years now. It works. If you go to a trade room and it is constantly changing, why, you got to ask yourself, why is it changing? Always changing. We don't change. We're constantly tuning what we do. Wait, I say constantly? It's actually not that constant. I'm constantly looking to tune what we do, and on occasion, I'll find something that is so compelling, we'll add it to what we do, okay? That's very important. So now let's look at, oops, that's not it, our new setup that we're going to call the naked speed tick setup, all right? This is what a lot of you came for. This is where the climactic volume and the Wix percent indicators come into play. This is also where we start to lose this rule about support and resistance, okay? Now, the rule has served me well over time, this having support and resistance behind my trade has served me well. However, I just did this study. Well, no, I've been working on this study for, I don't know, how long? Two weeks? <laughs> how long have I been working on this? Um, three, four months? Yeah. So I've been working on this study for months. And when I do a study like this, this is the way that you should be. If you guys are trying to build your own trading system, 
um, or taking parts and pieces of trading systems and making them your own, which all of us have done, right? All of us do that. Here's where we get screwed up. You have a theory, right? You say, I think I'll try this. This seems like a good idea. And then you go about proving that that theory is correct. Okay, this is what I did for so many years. Hold on just a second. I got a stupid uh, sun is shining right in my eyes in the window. Let me let me move this uh, curtain here. Hold on just a second. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> I could hardly concentrate. That sun came right around the corner and blasted me right in the face. <laughs> I just couldn't see anymore. Uh, yes, that is correct. You guys can hear me now, right? I got the mic on. Everything good? Okay, good. Just want to make sure. All right. So where was I? Talking about this resistance and how it's served me over time. But I've done the study, and the study is something that I that I worked to disprove a theory. That's what you guys need to do if you're still working on your own, or you have your own version of. Well, there's a lot of people out there that trade their own version of what I trade, what we trade in the trade room, that have created a system that they like better, that suits them better by uh, taking what we've done and tuned it. But you only want to do that if you have done the work to disprove your theory, okay? That's a lot different than what most of us do. You have a theory, and you're going to do everything you can to tell yourself that you're pretty smart and that your theory was right, and I'm going to go ahead and trade it. And then it just doesn't work, right? The numbers don't lie. So rather than doing it with money, trying to trade with money to see if your theory was right or not, do the work first. Do the study and work at disproving the theory. And if you can't disprove it, then you've got something. And that's why this took me so long. I was able to disprove an awful lot of what I believed to be true. And this is where this setup came from. Okay. All right. Now, first thing we're going to talk about is this push, right? We have in the what we do with the speed tick, we have what we affectionately call a one bar push. Which would look like this. All right, we, we affectionately call this a one bar push when it jumps out of a channel, okay? And, and with a speed tick, I will trade that when I have support or resistance behind my trade. I will not trade that with this setup, okay? I will not trade, and even though we're not going to be using support or resistance anymore, not that not that it's not valuable, it's just not required anymore, okay, for the setup. 
it is optional and I'm going to talk to you about some options to consider adding to your trade setup to, to the way that you choose to trade this there are rules to all of our trades that I use for my trade setups and there are a lot of people most people tend to like to follow my rules a lot of people like to create their own based on their own risk tolerance levels and that's okay if you do the study okay this is no longer gonna cut it we need let me get rid of this we need at least uh, that's the wrong one. A two bar push. All right, so this bar and then another up bar. All right, so that's that's the first criteria of this particular what we're calling naked. Oh, we call it naked because there's no supportive resistance behind it. We're going to do it out here in the open field with no supportive resistance. So that's why we call it naked. All right, that we got that name when we were uh, trading a different trade that we've renamed a rock star. Um, and then we have the naked rock star, which is uh, trading without support and resistance. So that's why I thought, you know what, we're going to call this naked speed tick because it's no longer required. So what we're going to see here is a couple of things. First, we're going to have at least two bars, this being the second bar. We're going to have climactic volume, okay? So what we do, this, this indicator, this blue box that we have around this, fired off when the volume inside this bar is X amount of volume let's just say for we're not I'm not talking about trade room settings or anything right now just so I'm just going to talk about so you guys can understand this bar the volume inside this bar is over 200 percent of the average volume of these bars okay That's telling us if suddenly we have, for what seems like no particular reason, more than 200% of the average of these bars, that's climactic volume. So in the trade room, we're actually doing 300%. Okay? So we really want to know. And you could increase that to whatever number you want. But typically... Climactic volume is considered between 200 and 300 percent of the previous X bar look back. In the trade room, since we trade on such fast charts and since we make such fast decisions, we're only going to use the last five bars of volume to read and then to figure out at what kind of volume we have in this bar relative to these bars. If it's 300% or higher, we're going to know that this is very likely climactic volume. Okay, everybody clear on that? Any questions about that? No? All right. The next thing we're going to look for on this bar is going to be any speed tick. Could be, oh, oh, hold on a second. Could be a white one. Could be medium blue one. Or, get this, you guys ready for this? Could be a big blue. I know. I just blew a bunch of your minds, right? 
<laughs> I I did not remember. All right, Tyra, remember when I showed you the histogram? Oops, not that's not it. Uh, remember when I showed you? Where'd it go? This histogram. Remember when I showed you that this bar, this exceeded, this bar exceeded this third line? It prints a big blue. Historically, that has told us that the orders are coming in so fast that we don't know what to expect. So I, as I mentioned, we'd, and that's why these guys are going crazy because they've been with me a long time. And they know I have never, ever in 10 years traded a big blue. So here's the funny thing about that. I had no intentions of ever trading a big blue. But the data said that the big blue had just as high a probability as any of the other speed ticks. And I couldn't deny the data. This surprised me as much as any, anything, guys. I almost didn't even factor it into the study. But I went ahead and turned on the big blues and made sure that I was doing everything right. And it just happened. So I couldn't rule it out anymore. All right? So any speed tick, this is going to change things, right? Um, and, and so there are some optional rules here uh, that I want to tell you. And I'll tell you the optional rules here in just a few minutes. Because there's, there's two more things you got to have on, for, to take this what we're calling naked speed tick trade. This also surprised me. Every single winning naked speed tick trade had a ricochet on it. Every single one. Now, that being said, some of the losing trades had them too. All right, so there there is absolutely losing trades in this setup. But uh, that caught me off guard also. So these two, they, oh, by the way, and the ricochet has always been a darker color. <laughs> the ricochet has always been a darker color, but for the new year, we have this new background color that we're using in the in the trade room. So we have to lighten it up a little bit. So this is the color of the ricochets now in the trade room. So that's another absolute. Now, don't think, oh, well, that's going to make us have a lot fewer opportunities. It actually happens quite often because this is, again, these ricochets are, are actually, for those of you that don't know where the ricochet comes from, the ricochet is was a byproduct of this histogram. When I was developing the speed tick, I noticed something else. And what I noticed was that even if price uh, or the speed didn't exceed one of these lines, it's kind of hard to tell on here. Uh, yeah, let's look over here. Okay, so you notice that price you know, is moving at this speed. If, if it's moving like here, here, this is better. It's moving real, you know, relatively slow. Remember, think of this as a speedometer. It's moving relatively slow, and then all of a sudden, it takes off like a, like a rocket car. I noticed when that happened, look, I just picked this one randomly. I was looking down here. I just happened to look up here. Look what happened to price. Look what happened. 
going slow, 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 really fast. Now, it didn't reach the speed tick threshold level of fast, but it relatively faster than this. So you just go here, you look there, open up the next bar, we would print a ricochet here. Look what price did. Okay? So that's where the ricochet came from. We've added that to this. Again, a surprise to me. Now, the next thing that I noticed as I'm analyzing winners versus losers, um, relative to the ricochet, no, but I didn't have a lot of, yes, I do remember. About 50-50. If there's not a, a ricochet, about 50-50. Not good. That's why you got to have the ricochet. Much better with the ricochet. Now, I noticed during this, and just ignore the color of this bar, that if these bars, this setup bar, had long wicks, meaning that price was rel – yeah, I do. I'll show you some in just a minute. I've got I've got a bunch of them actually. I'll show you some trading. Uh, yeah, they're they're still images though. I can show you more on video at another time. I'm will be posting a lot of videos of them soon. But I do have some images of the setups, and I'll show you in just a, just a minute here. Okay. So we have our climactic volume. Everybody's figured out. Everybody understands what this is, right? There's no questions before I move on about climactic volume, where it comes from and, and why we're measuring it. Yes, you got it? All right. Here's something I noticed about the losers. I start I you know, I started studying all the losing trades where, you know, we had all of these parameters in place, but they were losing. I noticed that most of them were very wiki bars, meaning when I say wiki, they're very whippy bars. Price opened here, went way down here, came way up, way up here, came way down here, and then closed down here. Okay, so these were very whippy. There was a lot of whipping action inside of this bar. And I used the wicks. I just noticed that there was a lot of wick on the bars on the setup bars prior to the the the, tra the next bar opening and prior to it being a losing trade. So what I decided is I need to know when the wicks are a certain percentage of the body of the bar. Okay, so that's, you see this pink shadow behind the wick? This pink shadow is part of the uh, the settings that says if the wick is X percent more wick, either side, both sides added together, is X percent more than the body of the bar, print a shadow behind the wick. Okay, and in this case, we made it bright pink or red for stop. Okay, bright pink means no trade. Don't trade it. Too wicky. Even if we have this and this and, you know, a couple of uh, bars up, don't trade it. This excludes the trade because price was too whippy inside of this bar. Clear? Yes. This is the, it will, as the bar grows and shortens, it changes color. Yes. So that's why we're waiting. We're still waiting for the open of the next bar to make our decision. Because during the 
life of this bar, of course, this this body is getting shorter and longer, right? Because current price, this was the open. This is the current price right here. If this is a if this is the current bar, this is the current price. So it's going to move up and down. So the body is getting longer and shorter. So as we watch our countdown timer and we get towards the the open of the next bar, I'll start studying this and and make a decision on the open of the next bar based on what color this is. Okay, so I did this because we're all about having yes or no decisions. And if I have to, if I didn't have this, I wouldn't know for sure what the percentage, now this one's pretty easy to see, but I wouldn't know for sure what the percentage of the wick to body was. So that's why I made this a, a visual yes or no. Uh, that's a good question, Alan. Nothing changes with the rock star, but, and we'll go over this over time, but you could add these as a filter for your rock star trades for sure. Okay? This doesn't change any rock star rules as they exist right now. But I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't want to use them in your trade setups to help you qualify some of your Rockstar trades. Yeah. Um, yeah. X. <laughs> Have you looked at our YouTube channel? There's a whole bunch of information, and this this will also be on the YouTube channel. We will send out... Uh, a link to the video uh, either tonight or tomorrow so yeah it, it will be available yeah um, here let me uh, let me put this in here while we're talking about it there's a link to a uh, a section of our YouTube channel that oh, I looked away from the mic sorry all right, yeah, I looked away. So that's that's a link to our YouTube channel, um, Trade of the Day videos. Go look at those. You will learn so much from those Trade of the Day videos. You won't see any Trade of the Day videos relative to what I'm talking about now because this is the very first time our traders are hearing about this. They've seen these indicators in the room only for a couple of days. Um, but we haven't been trading anything like this yet. So you won't see them in the room. You'll see speed, I mean in the videos. You'll see speed ticks and our favorite trade setup called a rock star. Yeah, the 75% wick rule uh, was not something I even conceived of initially, Dwayne. It just, if you do enough, if you look at enough examples and you do enough testing, things pop out at you. And this popped out at me whenever I looked at losers, I noticed that uh, many of those losers were were like this so you'll notice uh behind this wick it's green it's kind of it, i'm sure it's hard to see you guys will see it in the trade room it's it's kind of hard to see but this means go green means go so if i have all of the other parameters in place the open of the next bar is a cell <laughs> that's funny <laughs> I always try and, and I know you did it yourself but I always try to get people to answer their own questions it, it, it ends up being a much more valuable learning experience if they answer their own questions for them so this I mean I could go into <clears throat> and, and all, all of the other rules 
uh, still apply as far as um, uh, when to when to put on a trade on the open of the next bar. I'm going to put on a trade at the open or better. Okay, if if the bar opens and backs up, I'll put on my trade up here. Now, there is a limit to that, and we'll we'll talk about that later uh, because I don't want you guys chasing trades. Just don't go more than five ticks. Uh, if if this price jumps five ticks or more or more than five ticks, let it go. Don't don't throw on a trade up here. All right. Just let it go. But if it jumps five ticks and then stops, I'll put on a trade up here. And I'll short it from up here. All right, but I, I've got to see a pause in price. It's got to kind of go up, stop. And then if it goes up and stops me out, it stops me out. I mean, that's just the way it is. This trade is going to require a good bit of practice. If you haven't already figured that out, what we do in the trade room, for those of you that don't know, those of us that are uh, daily trade room members, uh, particularly those of us that are in the Einstein or VIP program, we have a system of teaching that's called a fast forward program. And we teach you how to practice this in off hours. Practice not during trade room hours. Trade room time is game time, not practice time. So if you're sim trading and you think, well, I'm just practicing, that's not practice. That's a game time. You practice away from game time. You practice in the evenings during practice time. And we teach you how to do that in the fast forward program. Okay. You can practice dozens of these in the amount of time it would take you to just sit in the trade room and see one to practice. This is how you get good at a trading system like this, where we do have an extremely strong edge. But the flip side of that is it takes practice. Execution is the hardest part of this trading system. Now, the nice thing is, is we don't leave it up to, you know, hope. We can actually control our fate by practicing our setups, okay? We're not always at the mercy of the markets, okay? Yes. Yeah, Alan, uh, and, and it's the same as the other indicators. You can have them, like in the trade room, I've, I've applied the same after eight bars, turn them off. Or you could have them stay on. So in uh, back testing, if if you want to on your own charts, just leave them on all the time. And and all of your bars will have either a pink background or a green one. That being said, there is another option. <clears throat> When you have a body, uh, a bar that's like this, you can say, what's the minimum bar size I want to have a signal? Because you really don't need them. You don't really don't need signals on these, right? Because you're not going to take a trade off a bar like this anyway. So if you have like a, I have four, uh, a four tick bar, I put, I, I just excluded this signal from any four tick or less bar. Uh, as, as long as you have historical data, they will fill. Yeah. So if you open a chart and there's no data feed, but you have these on the chart, then yeah, these will fill. <laughs> yes, the 75 is tunable. Absolutely, Norm. And I came up with 75 because I that's where I tuned it from. 
Yeah, you don't have wicks on Rinko, so this isn't going to work so much on Rinkos. I don't. I'm not a big Rinko. I don't understand why people use Rinkos because time and volume go hand in hand with each other, and and you can't do you have one without the other. And a lot of what we're doing here is volume based, so I don't understand why people use Rinko bars. I never have. Uh, I don't I don't understand the theory of removing information other than it creates a pretty chart. But I know people use them successfully. I, I just never could. And I I don't know anybody personally that uses them successfully, but I know people use them successfully. Um, so uh, no, I don't uh, this this trading system is not intended for Rinko bars. Uh, it's, uh, you're looking at the wrong one. I'll show you. Uh, since we're kind of winding this training down, um, and, and now we're just on questions. Um, let's see. I can hardly see that. Right there. Yeah, like I said, I've never met one. I've never met one, Christian. Uh, I know they're there. And I know there are systems. You have so many ways. You got that, Norm? You see that? That's where, the, that's where you put the percentage in. It's called the Wix percent. It's not in the climactic volume indicator it's in the wicks percent indicator which is what this is okay all right any questions about that setup oops that's the wrong one because i want to show you some options now, remember, we're all about trading within our risk tolerance levels, right? If you are fairly risk tolerant, you may want to just trade this the way it is. If you're a little less risk tolerant, you want higher probability setups, but you're going to have fewer setups then you could absolutely add in these criteria to your setups. Number one, this bar being overbought or oversold if it's down. You can add that as a criteria. You will get higher probability trades, but fewer of them. Okay. Same with our pullback alert. Same with adding back in support and resistance. Okay, which essentially would be a speed tick trade unless it's a big blue, right? So that would just be adding the big blue to your speed tick trade. And you can add the momentum indicator. As it stands now, this does not have to be on there. And I may have been misleading when I said it just needs to be a couple of up bars. It just needs to be two up bars. But by all means, you could add a rule that says, I've got to have a gray bar on the momentum indicator, okay, or black or whatever rule you want to you wanna make for it. Again, the more things you add, the higher the, the – basically the confluence, the more confluence you have, and I tested all of this. The higher the probability of the setup, but the fewer setups opportunities you're going to have. Okay? So now that you guys know the criteria, you know what the indicators do, now go for all you Einsteins. I know a lot of you are still waiting for licensing. 
Um, so two bars, if say four ticks each, would trump a single ten. Yes, yes. But guess we're factoring in time there also, Norm. You got to factor in time. And when you're thinking about time and how price is moving, you're thinking about the sentiment of the traders, right? Yeah, Christian, it is. Um, hit us up on our chat on Monday morning on our in our chat room. Uh, uh, when you come to our website, in the bottom right corner, there's a, uh, uh, a little chat box. Hit us up on that and tell us you just want to come in for a trial and we'll get you all set up for a trial. All right, what was I talking about? I got uh, I got sidetracked. Uh, just come to the website, Tyra, the secondbraintrading.com. Oh, thank you. Yeah, secondbraintrading.com. And, and uh, on every page of the website, bottom right-hand corner, there's a chat box. Um, licensing. I, a lot of you guys that are, uh, are VIPs and Einsteins have uh, sent in your licensing request. Uh, I see them. Uh, I will get to them this afternoon. Uh, it may take some time because there's an awful lot of you. Um, and so it may take me a little bit of time to work through them over the weekend. But hopefully by the end of the weekend, I'll have all of you done. For those of you that don't know, anybody that is an Einstein or a VIP gets all indicators that we ever develop, any system, any any education program, anything that we ever develop um, over time. Not yet, Christian. <laughs> Not yet. Wait until this is over. Um, and all you got to do is show up on Monday morning, okay? Anything that we develop over time, you get for free. So all of our VIPs, all of our Einsteins get these new indicators. This this indicator, this box, and then the Wix percent indicator, the one that creates the shadow, are brand new indicators that all of our people get for free. So they've already started to register their machine ID for licensing. If you sign up for our Einstein package, you will get also get this indicator for no, right now, we haven't raised the price of the Einstein package yet. Of course we will, because we have these new indicators and these new setups. So the Einstein price is obviously going up. Um, but right now we have it. So if you want these for free, and you don't want to pay more for Einstein, now's the time for that. Uh, and that's also on our website. Look under bundles. In fact, just if you want to do the Einstein um, after you've seen it, do me a favor. Just go here and send us an email, and I think Connor still can do a special for you if he ever comes back to work. He's in Las Vegas. Yep, yep. And and here's the thing, John. Don't go ahead and add it. Get used to looking at it. Get used to having it on your charts. Get used to seeing it and being able to still see the other setups because this is going to cause some clutter in your eyes for a little while. Once you've had it on your charts for a while, then start looking at trading these setups. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, you can come for a week, Tyra. Sure. Here's the thing. How many how many VIPs and Einsteins do we have here? And here's the here's the best here's the I know it's a big investment, but one. <laughs> All right. So ask. That all of these people here, Tyra, made that uh, uh, investment, and I'll be happy. You can ask them any questions you want here. I'll be happy to put them in touch with you, um, or you in touch with them to ask questions because you don't have to take my word for it. 
a lot of these people have been here for years. Uwe, how long you been here? Alan, how long you been here? Heinz, how long you been in here? No, if you've already loaded it, Norm, 150 years. <laughs> if you've already loaded it, just wait. I'll send you an email that tells you you're licensed, and then you can go ahead and put it on a chart. Yeah, so Tyra, um, here's the thing. Most of these people, I can't speak to all of them, most of these people are pretty smart, and I don't think they'd stick around that long if they, uh, if they weren't all that, if it didn't work, you know? So that's, that's really our best sales or our best way to promote our trading system is from our traders. You know, I, that, I always use the example of, um, we had to buy an air conditioner on our house and previous to that air conditioner going out, um, our neighbors got an air conditioner. And so I just went over next door and I said, I need an air conditioner. What'd you think of the people you used? And he said, oh, they were awesome. They did a great job. And so I hired them and put in my air conditioner because I already knew what I was gonna get because I had other people tell me that it was, you know, what to expect. So we kind of use that around here. Rather than trying to convince you by showing you how much money I make or showing you a bunch of videos about getting rich and all this stuff, I just let our traders tell you. Yeah, we do, but most people don't do it uh, or take advantage of it, but we do have a monthly trade room. Um, and you can ask Connor about that. Um, when you hit the chat, Connor's not here today, so hit us on Monday, and uh, he should be here on Monday, I think, um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get you fixed up on coming into the trade room. I mean, you can do the first week for free. Yeah, and Bob actually helped uh, with some ideas on how to make the uh, the speed tick adaptive for the NinjaTrader 8. Oh, I, I promise you, Tyra, we understand. We all understand that here. We've all been through it. We've all been through it, um, which is why we we give references rather than promises, okay? This is just like anything else. We teach you to think of trading just like anything else you've ever gotten good at. There's no secret to, to this. The problem most of us believe when we get into trading is that there's a secret and that because what we see is just charts that move up and down and click a price and you expect price to either hit your stop or your target. And that's to us, that's what trading is when when you're not uh, really thinking too much about it. That's it. That's all we see. By now, you realize trading is much more than that. Yet, we still have this underlying feeling that it should be simple. It should be easy. And so there's an easy way to do it. There's something easy. And I can tell you the easy way is the hard work. Okay, that's what I spent seven years looking for the easy way. Seven years, I looked for the easy way because I didn't want to take the time to do hard work. And then I finally did the hard work and things became easy. Excellent. Yeah, um, anybody that wants to talk to Tyra, um, send me an email, please. Send me a, a support. Send a support, and I'll send Tyra, and I'll give you her email, or give you her email, or vice versa, or whatever. Um, so anybody that would like to volunteer, uh, I know we already have a list of a bunch of you that are on the list that are happy to talk to people. Um, but if you would like to be put on that list. Um, Send me a support at theintentionaltrader.com and uh, I'll add you. I haven't done it yet, Norm. That's why. I told you I'll send you an email.
Oh, Connor did. Okay, send me an email and I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Uh, there, uh, oh, and if I can't fix it, I'll come onto your computer and fix it for you. That's another thing, Tyra. If you're not computer literate, if you need help, I can. I do this a lot. I help people. I come on their computers. Probably one of my favorite things to do. Yes, there are. Uh, look at our website um, at the secondbraintrading.com and scroll down. And you'll see um, a button for individual indicators, and you'll see a button for bundles. There are a couple of bundles not listed on that page because we're in the uh, process of updating that page. And those bundles don't show the two new indicators. So the best thing to do is take a look at that, Bruce, and then, um, oh, here. I guess I could put that up. I should have put that up a while ago. Take a look at that and um, then hit us up on the chat. Yeah. And uh, those are, we put those on there because those are the three most popular bundles. We do have a couple of others. So hit us up on the chat. Hey, Stig. Excellent, thank you. Um, we'll put you on the list. Hey, <laughs> Marshall. Um, go to uh, support at theintentionaltrader.com and uh, send me a support request. I'm going to be working on support stuff all weekend. Because we've got, obviously, Connor, you know, goes on vacation just before uh, we have a <laughs> new indicators being released. But he had that planned in, in way in advance. I think the indicator release was just um, coincidental. So, um, yeah, if you would, anybody that needs help, uh, send it to support at theintentionaltrader.com and we'll get to you. I, I look at that email way before my uh, my other business email. So everything needs to go to support if you want my attention. We do, we do. Not now the guarantee, you need to read the guarantee. We will refund your money if we can't get it to work. If it doesn't do what we say it's supposed to do, yes. Now our guarantee has nothing to do with whether you're able to trade it or not. We already know it works. We have a lot of people trading this system. The guarantee is it doesn't work like we tell you it's going to work. Okay? Then we'll give it back. We'll give you your money back. So far, nobody's taken us up on it because we can always get it to work. And we, are, we have a lot of successful traders. All right, any other questions? This has been a, a good session. I know there's going to be some growing pains. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Yes, glad you said that. Here they are. All right, now you can't see it so good, but there is a green shadow here. But what's missing? To make this a, I, and I, some of these that I grabbed, I grabbed because I wanted to talk about. This is going to catch you guys off guard. Thank you. This, what happened? My screen went black. Hold on, let me stop. Something happened here. Oh, my sharing thing broke. Hold on a second. Uh, let me restart the projector. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Um, 
because I studied it, Robert. I studied it. I talked about that uh, a minute ago. Um, that I studied the typical pullback before the continuation of the trend. All right, and the hold on, I'm still working on this. Waiting for this app to close that crashed. The projector crashed, but I can restart it here. Just waiting for it to restart. Whoops, that wasn't it. Ah! Why does it keep doing that? All right, so the five tick target is based on research and the highest probability. It'll give you more trades on everything, Jose, yeah. So yeah, I just, uh, none of these uh, images have any rhyme or reason to them. Some of them I just wanted to show you and some of them uh, are absolute winners or losers. I actually showed both. Here's one. All right, so got a hard drop. No wicks, right? Almost no wicks. Speed tick, ricochet, CVI, open of this bar, price took off. Okay, there's an example. Here's an example. All right. All the conditions, there's our ricochet, speed tick, open of the bar, price dropped. Haha, <laughs> big blue. Ricochet, big blue speed tick, small wick, open of the bar. coincidental that there's the high and the low of the day in these. I was just, these are just from the other day. These are from uh, last week. And some of them are from yesterday. So I can show you a bunch of these, but they're all going to, that's, and that's the beauty of what we do. After a while, they all start to look the same. Just the same thing over and over and over again. This one happens to be overbought. It also has resistance behind it. This could be considered a naked rock star because that's the black star right there, which, by the way, because that's so hard to see, those are going to be um, a light gray now, a silvery color. Yes, I can. I'll get to that, Norm. I do have some in here. So there you go. That one qualifies does not qualify. See that? Everything applies. Look how long that wick is. Did not qualify. The op This bar opened and dropped straight down. All right? Qualified. All right. This one qualified, then this bar got real whippy. This did not qualify. This this didn't have the uh, ricochet on it, so there was no trade here. The trade was here, and it got real whippy, so it's hard to say. But that did qualify as a setup. It's hard to say whether it was a winner or a loser. Yes, we exclude, the pink shadow excludes it as a setup. 
<laughs> well, if you're not already trading naked, you're doing it wrong. All right. So there's a good setup. Look at the wick. Uh, no, failed setups are just failed setups, and that's it. I don't, I'm not looking to take other trades. It either works or it doesn't, and I sit and I wait for the next one. Uh, our, uh, you, you might find, Tyra, once you join us, uh, our trading gets very relaxed. It's It's pretty low stress because we're not trying to create trade setups. We're not trying, we don't do any analysis. We're not studying the markets. We're not listening to news. We're not trying to crystal ball what we think is gonna happen next. That's the nice thing about what we do. We trade the setups. We wait, it's, it's basically, if this condition occurs, look for this one. If this one occurs, look for this one. If this one occurs, look for this one. If that one occurs, place a trade. And eventually you do those all in within seconds, like driving a car. Um, it's in the fonts. Open the fonts, Norm, inside the fonts. I'll show you that. Um, it's actually... Uh, put that in. Uh, if you can't find it, there's a little drop down arrow in the font section and that'll open the colors. If it pulls back too far, well, if it does, it's going to be red. It's going to pull back. Uh, it's going to show red pretty much. Uh, that's almost always the case. So here's one that did not qualify. Ended up getting a few ticks and then it kept dropping. It's qualified. This was actually, to be honest, this is called our naked rock star trade. So we would have traded this with or without climactic volume. No, we wouldn't because it's not oversold. That's why. No, it shows up as soon as the condition exists. As soon as we've exceeded the volume of the previous five bar, the average volume of the previous five bars, I mean, it could show up within the first few seconds. This could put the box around it. And then the box just grows with the bar. <laughs> you're, no, you're no dummy. Yeah, see, this was almost a speed tick setup, but look where the bar opened. So now it's a naked speed tick because this line is up here. It's not back here. Here's a loser. Everything looked good here. Open of this bar, loser. Just to show you that yeah, it's not foolproof. Takes losses, and you're going to have to accept that. There's a no trade. Yep, no trade here because of the, the wick. Traded this one, and that's a loser. Hey, John, I'm the only one here. JD. So I can't answer your chat right now. I'm flying solo today. All right, so those are the, the images of the setups. We will be coming out with some uh, live video, live recorded video. Well, if you're entering on that bar, on the mat, wow. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Y'all flying around somewhere? 
Yeah. Um, no, if you uh, if this bar gets whippy, you're already in the trade, right? No, I'm already in it. Uh, chances are it's going to whip us out before I have a chance to um, <clears throat> to change it. But that being said, absolutely, if because the bar may not close. It may not close red. It may get whippy and then settle down and then turn into a green, you know, uh, have a green uh, shadow there. So I'm going to manage it the same way I manage other trades. Now, the longer the trade goes on, I'll start pulling my stop up. But chances are it's going to uh, it's going to do what it's going to do. If it's real whippy, it's either going to be a winner or a loser probably pretty quick. Inside the uh, indicator settings. You see font, or let's see. Um, actually, let me, so I don't tie up everybody else, Norm, send me a, uh, a, a request and I'll show you. I'll send you a, uh, a little video and show you how to change the colors. We actually have that in the, um, in the wiki. Yeah, okay, good. It's in the it's in the wiki the uh, the documentation wiki. All right, loose up. <laughs> we have that. <laughs> oh yeah, close up. Yeah, yeah, and then there's a close down. So you have to change it in two places. Close up and close down. Sorry, I and you got to open that to get to the fonts. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a close up and close down. You have to change it twice. All right, so here's our special offer. Um, you've obviously seen it. Those of you that are already package owners, uh, I would jump on this one uh, before the 8th. Otherwise, it goes to 512, all right, uh, until the 24th. A lot of you have already done it, uh, and you've already uh, sent in your licensing request. Please give me some patience over the weekend. I will try to get them all done. Yeah, the special offer, this particular special offer, is just for these two indicators. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just for these two indicators. Um, but talk to, come back and talk to Connor in the chat about the um einstein special that he's still got going on and the reason that it is he's still got it going on is because we haven't added the uh we've added these two to the package but we haven't increased the price because of adding these to the package so cv is climatic volume wp is wix percent so it's both of the both of the indicators that we talked about today the new indicators yeah I just couldn't get it all in one line there, so. All right, so the Wix percent is the one that does the, you know, the colored shadows behind the wick. And I think that other people will find this useful for other, for other things. Um, and then the climatic volume has that box around it. Any other questions? I see somebody typing. Thanks, Casey. It's been uh, it's been a lot of work, and I'm I'm very happy to finally get be getting them to you guys. I know I was working on them a lot more than I think most people will. So uh, uh, I want you all to <clears throat> promise me you're going to take your time with this. Um. The uh, get used to having them on your charts. Don't worry about oh, I need to take these trades. If you hear me trading them in the trade room, don't try to trade them immediately. Practice, okay? <laughs> Two weeks. Uh, 
Uh, well, the the that's some of the other indicators, Tyra. The the big blue is the speed tick, and that's not part of this particular special. It is part of the Einstein special that we don't have listed, um, and it's and it's in on some of our other packages. So the only the only two indicators that we're talking about here are just the brand new ones. We don't have any special because, to be honest, most of the traders that were here today or that came came to learn more about these two new indicators uh, because they already own all of our other stuff, all of our other packages, or, you know, all of our other indicators, packages and education package uh, programs and all that stuff. They already have that. So a lot of this was training for them for that, but we invited everybody. We certainly want everybody to know about it, but this is more geared to letting them know because we've been getting a lot of emails. When is that new indicator going to be ready? When is it ready? And so finally, we're uh, releasing it. So uh, that's that's all that's with this. But Connor can help you out with the uh, the Einstein. I know that we had a conversation two days ago about raising the price of Einstein. He goes, well, I'll have to do that when I get back from my vacation. So for now, the Einstein is still at the price that it's at. Um, Jim, uh, the well, that's hard to say. I can tell you based on what other people say about our trading system in general. Um, and I get reports of 75 to 85% win rate of our trading system as a whole. Not about this specific. I'll have to wait and hear what other people say. I can tell you what my win percentage is, but that shouldn't help you much because you haven't been doing this for 10 years. Find out what other people's win percentages are. And what's reported to me is 75 to 85% win rate. And that's all I can tell you is that what they tell me. That a lot of it has to do with execution. Yeah, it's funny, Matt. Um, I don't recall giving him permission either. I was kind of wondering who allowed it too. Just suddenly he was gone. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, well. I've lost control. All right. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. I hope uh, great things for the new setup. Don't rush it, please. Yes, uh, the uh, the two new ones should be okay with Bloodhound. I sent them to um, Zach to test, and uh, I think he said initial testing was good. He was going to get back to me with final testing, hopefully sometime next week. All of this was turned over to him just before the uh, just before the holidays, so I'm sure he's enjoying his holiday uh, and just now getting back to work. So hopefully he'll uh, he'll get back to me with that. But they, if they're not perfectly Bloodhound compliant at this point, they will be. And when I say Bloodhound, I mean Bloodhound for Ninja Trader Eight. Yep, thank you guys. Thanks everybody for coming and uh, hit me up at support at theintentionaltrader.com if you've got any questions uh, or need any help. I will be getting the licensing done after I eat lunch and uh, try to get you guys knocked out uh, by the end of the weekend. So don't rush me. I hope to have it done by the end of the weekend. Definitely by Monday, uh, if not by the end of the weekend. But I appreciate your patience. All right, everybody, thanks for coming, and uh, we'll see you all soon.